Hello, my name is Maude Pavel and today I'm here to speak with you about contemporary circus. Contemporary circus has been my passion for the last 10 years. I've been working as a journalist, researcher and producer and currently I'm the head of strategic development in Riga Circus and the head of Riga Circus School. Today to speak to you about contemporary circus, I'll have to touch the history of the circus and the language of the circus the emergence of the contemporary circus in France in 1970s and as well I would like to talk with you about the diversity of contemporary circus today and the way it functions in today's world. Thank you very much and I hope you will find it interesting until the end. Even if our expectations of what circus performance looks like may differ depending on our previous experience, I think most of us would agree that we think of a circus performance a set of physical disciplines. The disciplines we usually associate with the circus and call them circus disciplines can be divided in several groups. First, floor acrobatics. Those are different acrobatic disciplines using or without using a special circus equipment or apparatus. We know bunking, Russian bar, Chinese hoops, acrobatic chair, contortion, Icarian games, hand to hand and many others. The second group, without which we could not imagine circus, is aerial acrobatics. We can use different apparatus as aerial rings, aerial cradle, Russian cradle, aerial hoop, cordyless, cloud swing, straps, silk, swinging or dance trapeze, static or Washington trapeze, etc. The third big group is balancing or equilibrium. Most popular are probably unicycling or balancing on a bicycle. But there are different types of balancing. You can as well use rolling globe, ladder, um, balance on your hands, on a tight or slack wire, roll a bola. Some more physical disciplines as German wheel or seal wheel. The fourth big group is object manipulation or juggling. This includes juggling with rings, clubs, cigar boxes, and as well object manipulation as Diabolo or flower sticks. And the fifth group is, of course, the art of clowning. Illusion or magic also has been considered as a part of a circus, even if it has a big market and industry of its own. In traditional circus, we also cannot avoid animal taming and the equestrian art. Each of these so-called circus disciplines are present in the circus, both traditional and contemporary today. But they were not necessarily invented for a circus. They root in different cultures across the world. Juggling was already present in ancient Egypt. China has a long-going acrobatic tradition. Tight wire artists were known in Eastern Asia thousands of years ago. And we couldn't imagine the medieval Europe without traveling bards and animal trainers. What we call circus today is an ensemble of all these things. And that is not for nothing that we call a British man ex-military Philip Esley the father of the modern or so-called traditional circus. The story of the modern circus started in the 18th century. Most precisely, Philip Esley was an ex-military. All the big wars in Europe were ended at that time and a lot of military men were looking for income by doing shows, performing on their horsebacks, being an excellent trick riders. That was the case of Philip Esley. Near London, he had opened his own riding school and he started a new performance there. He organized his performance in a round place, but in addition to trick riding, he invited jugglers, tight wire artists and acrobats to fulfill breaks between the trick riding acts. That was a big success. It made him the best competitor between all the shows. The name circus was given to this type of performance only after, but this new type of performance spread over the Europe and over the oceans really fast. Despite what we think, circus has not stayed completely the same since Philip Estley. In Philip Estley's time, horses were the main heroes of the performance. Horses were as well the main heroes of human life. 
They were their mean of transportation and their machinery to work the fields. With the time changes, circus changed as well. In the beginning of 20th century, we saw much less of horses and we saw new machinery coming in. With the interest in foreign lands and exoticism, trained and wild animals came into the performances. Circus in USA went as far as making tree ring circus and the different sideshows showing not only the animals but as well humans with different disabilities. Even if there has been some changes in traditional circus, there are things that stayed the same for more than 200 years. It's usually performed in a ring and it has a sort of a ritual atmosphere. The military forms and aesthetics have been there since Philip Estley times. The music usually include brass bands and drums and accentuate the artist's dramaturgy. The performance itself is built up on acts, including diverse circus disciplines and animal taming and equestrian art. Each act is presented by a ringmaster or Monsieur Loyal. The whole performance is divided in two parts, with a break in the middle to sell popcorn, sweets and set the stage for the second part, which usually started by an act of a big animal. Circus used to be extremely popular form of art, but after the Second World War, it started to see its decrease. There was too much competition with the cinema, music halls, motor car races, attraction parks. People got so much new things to experience to feel the same excitement and adrenaline. In 1970s, together with the loss of interest between the audiences and the petrol prices, French circus companies, even the big ones, were in big trouble. Some of them even had to close forever. And French government decided to step up, not necessarily to create a new revolution in a circus art, no, to save the craft that has been existing for 200 years. No one could have predicted what is going to be the outcome. So in 1974, the first two professional circus schools were open in France and in Europe. It might seem as a minor fact, but let's remember that before, circus was only accessible if you were born in a circus family or by some sort of accident managed to join some circus company. From this moment on, everybody who felt that circus be, could be their language of expression could become a circus artist. And that is how the new aesthetic change started. People from dance, theatre, music and other art forms joined circus studies, learned circus skills and implemented them in the aesthetics they knew. The second big change, and maybe even more important, in 1978, circus finally became the responsibility of Ministry of Culture. Before, in France, circus was the responsibility of Ministry of Agriculture. And this first took off the focus of the animals and brought it to the humans. It gave circus the recognition of an art form, but as well, in the French system, it gave the opportunity for artists and technicians from circus to get the intermittence, which is a sort of um, support during the creation period while your performance is not giving you any profit. This allowed circus artists, instead of performing every night after night the same act just to buy food, to spend time on training and creation and creation of new shows. All those factors, a new system for education, a better infrastructure for the field itself, and artists coming from different artistic sectors bringing new ideas to the circus. It gave the place for the birth of new circus. New circus performances were not made to be the opposition of traditional circus, there were just new people exploring circus languages. They didn't immediately say goodbye to the acts, but they linked them together with a story and put them in a new aesthetic 
that was interesting for them at the time. New circus brought a lot of audiences and there were a lot of circus companies born around the world. The most famous may, might be Cirque Plume and Arcos in France, Nofit State in UK or Cirque du Soleil in Canada. With the education system put in place and the artist creativity boosted, you couldn't stop the development and the circus continued to change. It is difficult to say when it's the beginning of contemporary circus, but researchers have decided to call it 1995, when the graduates of CNAC, National Centre for Circus in France, presented their performance Cri du Camélion in Avignon Festival. That is considered the time when contemporary circus fully entered the performing arts world. But let's stop talk about contemporary circus history and let's talk about the art field itself. So what is contemporary circus? There is no one definition. It's usually described whether by opposition to traditional and new circus, but we could as well just look on what is there today in the contemporary circus field. I would say that there are artists who are using circus disciplines and skills derived from circus disciplines to express their ideas and concepts. Contemporary circus is not there anymore just to entertain. Contemporary circus is there to create. Contemporary circus artists have the ambition to be important in the history of the performing art. Contemporary circus artists usually don't describe themselves as interprets. They rather call themselves performers and authors. And if you look at contemporary circus performances, you will see that most of performances are not signed by choreographer or director as it would be in dance or theatre tradition. Instead, they're signed by collective or company. Each performer is author and has the authorship to the performance. With the diversity of contemporary circus today, it's difficult to create a sort of classification of the styles. But we can look at contemporary circus from different point of views. First, it's the form. The form with the, the large scale performances with a lot of artists on the stage and the set of all groups of circus disciplines has become very rare. Instead, smaller scale performances with fewer disciplines are much more represented. And there's even trend of monodisciplinary performances where one discipline is chosen as main language. For example, performance created only of juggling by Gandini Juggling, Company CAO or others. The same happens in clowning, acrobatics or balancing. This trend really helps to go in deeper artistic research for each of those disciplines and research each discipline as an artistic language. I think it has made a big change in the, how we see the disciplines. For example, when we looked at juggler earlier in traditional circus, we thought how many balls and how many tricks he's able to perform. But in contemporary circus, we look at the juggler and we look at his movements, his relationship with an object he juggles, with the symbolic meaning of the object he juggles, with his relationships with the other jugglers on the stage, and whether he actually needs an object. When we look at clowns, they have lost their white faces and red noses. They often work in collectives and they create physical performances, treating the same questions than before, but in much more researched way. New magic is a trend that represents how far one discipline can be modified. In traditional magic, we see one magician in the center of attention, making us believe he makes the tricks and those are reality. In contemporary magic or new magic, magie nouvelle, the attention is taken away from the magician. Magic happens on the stage and often people on the stage are not even involved in the creation process of the magic. Magic is more a sort of a special effects and ambience maker or a personage itself. We as well see that more and more companies choose to work with solo or duo performances. This might be an artistic choice, but we have to admit as well, it's the economical reality in which we live. It's much more easy to create 
and much more easy to tour smaller scale performances. The second point of view that we could have are the space. There are less and less performances performing in a round shaped spaces. Even if in recent years, there are young companies who are touring with big tops and trying to reclaim their roots for the circus, they stay a minority. Most of performances are programmed in theaters and black boxes. There are, of course, as well, a big tradition for street festivals and contemporary circus can be performed outdoors and on the streets. There are performances that are made especially for places that would usually not be considered performing, performance places as kindergartens, schools, museums and libraries. And some performances are going even, even further and exploring what it means to create site specific. How can we use the space and valorize the space to the circus performance and what is the relationship between the movement and the space? The third aspect I would like to look at is the content of circus performances, the topics. Of course, there are hundreds of different topics in all the variety in circus performances, but there are some trends. The first one, I would call it human values. Those are performances about friendship, collaboration, trust, the relationship between individual and the group, love. Those topics are very close to the circus practice itself and they are as well well received, especially by large and family audiences. The second trend is to go into the research of circus as a practice itself. It might be a bit more estranged from the outsider, but it is interesting to see how circus goes into self-reflection. And the third one, where circus opens its eyes towards the world today. A political commentary, for example. Especially after the Me Too movement, it looks like circus had a wake-up call. And it's true that we see every year the same amount of women and men graduating circus schools, but we don't see the same amount of women and men on the stages in the prominent festivals and venues. There has been some work done with it. There are many conferences about women in circus, there have been discussions in the professional field and there have been many projects creating women-only performances, women-only companies, companies who choose to have a gender balance and performances who talk about women's situation both in life and in circus. The second movement that takes more and more force today are companies who choose to talk about climate change and ecological issues. These are political commentary this proves not all circus artists want to stay apolitical or stay there just for divertisement. There is a real wish for circus artists to change the world and participate in changing it. The fourth aspect that we could look at when talking about contemporary circus is dramaturgy. In traditional circus, it is quite obvious. Each act has its own dramaturgy and ends in its highest peak. And then, the acts are set together and the most exciting ones are always for the end of performance to make sure you leave with satisfaction. In contemporary circus, there's much more diversity. Of course, no one has forgotten how the excitement is built and it's still used, especially during the acts in the performance. But there can be a narrative, a story that the performance is following, or those can be images that represent different associations. Or it can be one long meditative contemplation. Contemporary circus can use words or it can be without words. A music plays a big part of dramaturgy as well, setting the stage and sometimes becoming almost an equal part of the artist on the stage. Digital world is taking much more space in the circus than ever before. Some performers are choosing the video and technology instead of theatre or stage. 3D reality has become the mean how audience members can experience what artists feel on the stage. Some artists are inviting audiences to become part of the dramaturgy of the performance. 
There's a lot of possibilities to still explore, and there are many artists doing that around the world. There could probably be many other aspects that we could look at contemporary circus. I believe contemporary circus is an accessible art. There is something for everybody, for those who have never stepped their feet in the theatre, or for those who follow the latest contemporary dance and theatre festivals. Contemporary circus speaks with us through its body, the body language. We have been living for the last few hundred years in a world of written and spoken word, but we still feel touch and act with our bodies every day. When we go to the circus performance, we feel it through our visuomotor neurons. Our body, body thinks that he does the same movement as an artist on the stage. I feel that this is the perfect setting to discuss and provoke discussions. Because these discussions go through bodily language and we can feel them directly helping the audience to empathize with the artists on the stage. So how does contemporary circus work? How one become an artist? In traditional circus, it was a lot about family. So you were probably born in the circus family and then you started to train very early. Learn your skills from your parents and went into the arena as soon as you were ready. Or maybe you got married into the circus family, learned some skills that could be useful for the community and worked with that. If your family knew some techniques how to tame animals or how to better train to become better acrobats, that has to be kept as a sec secret. That was not a knowledge for an outsider. Today, a lot has changed. There are circus schools across the world, both leisure schools for kids where parents send their kids not because they hope their children would grow up to become a circus professionals. No, just because they think that that is a valuable education for both their physical and mental development. But there is as well a whole infrastructure for a professional education. You can go to circus high schools, preparatory schools and university across the world. There are circus bachelor and master programmers and even a circus PhD possibilities. To show how formalized education has become, I want to mention FEDEC, the European Federation of Professional Circus Schools, that counts more than 70 members. Not all of them are professional circus schools, some of them are preparatory circus schools or important institutions who support the development and education of the circus in their countries. But circus education has become a formalized infrastructure and most of circus artists today start their career after finishing one of these schools. So what do they do after the school? How do you create a performance? In traditional circus, it was usually the circus director who chose different acts for the performance of the season. In contemporary circus, artists don't produce acts. They work solo or in groups, but they create companies and work on their performances during months or even years. They start with an experimental phase, then they go to work on di different aspects of their performance in residencies, working on both physical and technical aspects, and as well on the dramaturgy and aesthetics of the performance. How do they tour? Most of artists today don't travel with caravans. They don't go from city to city trying to get the most ticket sales. Artists are chosen by different venues and festivals, by their curators and artistic directors. The whole funding system is different. In traditional circus, most of circuses mostly counted on box offices. In contemporary circus, that is not possible. The whole period of creation is much more expensive as it takes a lot of time to rehearse and create a performance. Contemporary circus, most, in most countries, needs support from government and regional institutions in order to survive and create new work and show it to the audiences. So how does the circus infrastructure look like? So of course it's not only artists. There are artists, but there are as well festivals and venues who sh 
have a big role in sharing contemporary circus with the audiences. There are circus residency spaces and residency programs who give the space, time and resources that artists need in order to create new show and work on innovation. There is media that works around circus. There are academic researchers who write researches about circus and its aesthetics. And there are international collaboration networks like Circus Strada, European Network for Circus and Street Arts, or Baltic Nordic Circus Network. Those networks mostly work on creating a better environment for the sectors, putting the sectors on the agenda of policy makers, working on capacity building projects for everybody involved in the sector. And for the end of the presentation, I would like to present you a video made by Circus Strada to show how does circus and street art sector looks in Europe today.
Thank you very much for being with me till the end of this lecture. I really hope you took something from it and I hope this will be some sort of an inspiration to look for more information about contemporary circus. Thank you very much.